everybody. Today is going to be a little bit different than usual because today I'm going to show you a British car, which is not really a car, it's a 4x4. And I really like these 4x4s. But most importantly, the owner, who I think is the real life MacGyver. So let's go and meet with them. Hello there. Hello. How are you? Good. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm an American. I've been living here in Thailand for 32 years. All right. Just here in Chiang Mai. I was working for 24 years in industrial estate, but now I'm just relaxing. All right. And um, why did you choose a Land Rover? I've why had a few Land Rovers in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a short wheelbase Land Rover when I was about 19 years old in the States. Right. And I had it until I left, uh, the same one. And then I bought another one here and sold it about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then I bought this one more recently, about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, where, where did you find this? Actually, I had put a question to one of the mechanics in the area, mm -hmm. if they if he knew about any Land Rovers for sale. And in fact, somebody had come in the day before looking to sell their vehicle. So he hooked me up, I saw it and bought it. All right. And um, did you have to do some big restoration on it? Or? Well, let me put it this way. Driving home, I didn't know if I would make it alive or not. <laughs> All the right. steering was at least a half a turn free. Right. The brakes would go left or right depending on their mood or if they worked at all. <laughs> uh, it was shaking and rattling and it was just a mess. And so the first thing I did is I basically drove it one lap around my Mubon, parked it and pulled it apart <laughs> and started immediately working on and it. And when was it? When was this? Mm -hmm. This was about three years ago. Three years ago. And what is this actually? Because I didn't ask. Uh, this is a Land Rover Series 3. 1972, it's called a 109, which means the wheelbase right. is 109 inches. Uh, and I it, believe it's also called the station wagon version because it's got the pillar. The engine is not Land Rover engine, right? No, the engine is, it was originally a diesel vehicle. And the engine that's in it right now is a 4JV1 turbo. Oh, you have to elaborate. It's a, yeah, I it's, don't an, know it's, that. it's an Isuzu engine. Mm -hmm. This vehicle, when sold in Australia, was sold with the JB1 Isuzu engine. So it's not actually oh, really? okay. too far from Land Rover. It's actually what Land Rover would use in the vehicle in Australia. All right. I did that. And know that. these are kit, kit vehicles. So it actually may have been fitted with the JB1 originally. I have no idea. But I changed it to a JB1 turbo. And why did you? Because it had no power. <laughs> Also, the oil pressure was falling, 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 and I realized something was amiss. So I just bought a uh, used 4JB, uh, JB1 uh, in Japan, I think, and put it in myself. Okay, so this is the 4JB1 turbo, no intercooler. Uh, again, I put this in here. Mm -hmm. I did all the wiring, so the wiring is aircraft style where there's no cover on it. Uh, is that a special engine? Like, no. Wh why did you choose this one? Good question. So the 4JB1, as I mentioned, was originally used, but I preferred to keep it because it has no timing chain, no right. timing belt. It's mm -hmm. gear driven. Gear driven. Okay. Yep. So it's a gear driven engine. Uh, the cam and everything is gear driven, so it's just going to work. There is yeah. no failure potential. Also, if I can show you, yeah. uh, this is the only wire that runs the engine. I think it's this one. Mm -hmm. So there is one wire to this engine to run it. All right. Besides the starter, obviously. But this wire releases the fuel valve to let the engine to get fuel. Yeah. And therefore, it's just going to work. There's really? no electronics. So what, what's the horsepower in this engine? Ah, do you know? yes, I do know exactly how much it is. It's 70, 76 horsepower. 
we can show this because it's kind of cool. Yeah. This is a hydraulic winch. Mm -hmm. So I did all the plumbing for the hydraulic. Oh, another thing I so should the, mention. Is that, is that some, it's unusual to have a hydraulic winch? Land, Rover, Land Rovers came with a hydraulic winch sometimes, mm -hmm. but no, it's quite unusual. If you have a winch on a truck like this, it's almost always electric. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Also here, you can see this fitting here. Mm -hmm. This fitting, and there's another fitting in behind here. This is an oil cooler, which is underneath. Right. And it's run from, I ran it from the engine through the oil filter, through a thermostatic valve to the oil cooler. Works. Excellent. Wonderful. Yeah, so another unusual thing that you don't usually find on vehicles very much anymore is uh, I have leather wrapped the, uh, the leaf springs front and rear. So right. the leaf springs are all leather wrapped. And I do this to keep the grease, which I have greased the leaf springs to help, their, their, to help them from being too stiff. When you grease them, they, they're much smoother. They're more like coil springs. The drive train and everything else is oh, it's original. all original. All original. Yeah, it, and I, I did a full rebuild on the gearbox, the rear differential, and the front differential already. Do you know a history of this vehicle? Yes, I do. All I right. have a. I know a bit of the older history of it, the previous two owners. So I know the, the owner from two owners ago, mm -hmm. an Australian guy, and he sold it to a Chinese man. We went and did the woodwork. Well, I can show you some woodwork in here that you yeah, did. Yeah. All right. But the the Australian bought it from another Chinese guy who had taken it to Laos and fell into a pothole in Laos and crinkled the frame. Oh. So I know that I, when I saw the frame crinkles and I asked the previous owner, he said, oh yes, that happened in Laos. <laughs> so that was the history of it when it, before it came to me. And then its history with me is also a bit of a interesting one as well yeah tell us about it so i was driving to go pick up those front hubs <laughs> mm -hmm. the locking hubs yeah in may rim which is about 40 minutes from here yeah and i was going just down the road and i uh, saw a bright flash of orange from my side and a ford fiesta went under me she went under me right here mm -hmm. she smashed into my battery box which was very fortunate because she locked the battery in place. And then she went under and I drove over her with a <laughs> rear tire. So rolled over it twice and I ended up on my side. Uh, engine still running, turned off the engine. And uh, so I had to do a full rebuild. That's why the change, the color changed. <laughs> from... okay. So you had to paint it as well? Yeah, I painted the vehicle completely. There's no Bondo on this, by the way. It's all aluminum. That's great. This panel here, I made myself and did all these gauges. Mm -hmm. This is original. Okay. Yep. Um, so it, it, is, it is original if you consider this and then the improvement. Yeah. Well, let's put it this way. The tachometer is essential. I really love tachometers in vehicles. All right. So, of course, this engine didn't have a tachometer and I made a microcontroller to take the pulse off of the injector pump and it comes in at 33 pulses per rotation. So I had to divide it out and then uh, signal modify with a transistor to give the input for this okay. tachometer. And of course, water temperature. And I have two, te two places that I monitor the water temperature. So I actually have three temperature gauges. <laughs> actually, this is very useful. If you lose water, yeah. you will pick it up in one sensor, will pick it up before the others, and you'll see a difference in the water temperature. And you can say, hey, wait wow. a minute. Why is it now much hotter on that sensor than that sensor? <laughs> uh, this is oil pressure. We all love that one. Voltage, of course, we need. Uh, yeah. Current usage, temperature is, is just temperature. Always yeah. says above 100 here in Thailand. So, yeah. <laughs> oil temperature for the hydraulic, and then um, vacuum for the vacuum and turbo for the turbo, just to make sure my turbo is working properly at 5 psi. I did this restoration or, and improvement completely myself, alone, at my house. Just 
it's unusual, I think, that people would be so crazy. All right, folks, that's it for today. And he also building a car from scratch. It's gonna be a replica for a 1910, I think, car. I cannot wait to see that. See you next time. Thank you.